Hi there, in today's video I'm going to show you a complete step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up an expert Google Ads campaign. Now whether you're a beginner or have some experience, by the end of this video you'll be a Google Ads Pro, or at least that's my hope. And I'll make things as simple as possible for you. I'll take you through all the stages as well as the advanced features and tips that you won't learn elsewhere. Now the first thing we need to do is head on over to ads.google.com. I'm assuming you have a business email address or a Gmail account to log into. If you need to set one up, feel free to pause this video and come back later. But once you are logged in, we will need to click on sign in in the top right hand corner like so. And from this screen, we simply need to click on new Google Ads account. And the first thing Google wants from us is our business name. Now we're actually going to ignore this top section. That's because this is Google's automated way of setting up your account. I've spoken to many one-man bands, local businesses and small businesses that have set up their accounts this way. And they've all had a very negative experience of Google Ads as a result. Now having checked many of these accounts, it's because Google's taken as little information as possible from them and set their ads running. It's resulted in businesses spending more money than they wanted to and getting little or no results from it. And I can see why. Google is showing their ads for irrelevant search traffic. Many of the clicks are people that aren't even interested in these businesses. So by following my guidance today, we're going to avoid that. And our first step is to click on switch to expert mode at the bottom here. The first step of expert mode is to choose our campaign's objective. There are eight options for us to choose from. The first of those is sales. So if you're an e-commerce store or site that has a product to sell, then it's likely you're going to be selecting this as your goal. If you're B2B or lead gen, then there's a leads campaign for you. And if you don't have any conversion tracking set up on your website, then you may want to run a campaign for website traffic. I'd actually recommend that you get your conversion tracking set up before running anything, as this is pivotal to determining whether Google Ads is a success or not for your business, or whether you're getting the best ROI from it. Now I do have a separate video on setting up conversion tracking, so I won't go into any more detail on that here. For this video, I'm going to be running a lead generation campaign for my business, which is offering Google Ads Management. The other campaign types here include brand awareness, app promotion, and local store visits. But for the majority of businesses using Google Ads, it's nearly always one of the top two boxes we select. And then we're going to choose how we gather our lead information. For me, it's the most common two form submissions and phone calls. And after we select these two, we can simply click the continue button. Next is to choose our campaign type. There are six options here. The first of those is the traditional search campaign. These are ads displayed at the top of Google search results. Usually there are four ads above the organic results, but it can be fewer depending on what your query is, your location and similar metrics. The search campaign is what we're going to be selecting today and I'll go into more information on that shortly. But before we continue, I'll quickly give you an overview of the other campaign types. The first of those is Performance Max. This is relatively new, having been launched towards the end of 2021. Performance Max is an AI-driven campaign that can show your ads across all of Google's channels from one campaign, including YouTube, Display, Search, Gmail, and Google Maps. Now be warned, you'll have very limited control over these campaigns and receive very little data back from Google to determine what it is or isn't working for your campaign. But I do have to say, from personal experience, I've had some many great successes using these campaign types for e-commerce clients. Next is the display campaign. These are the banner ads that appear on other websites allowing you to reach a wider audience. In fact, 35 million websites and apps display these banner ads. I find display ads to be great for remarketing campaigns and expanding my client's audience reach. The fourth campaign type is discovery. Google claims that you can reach up to 3 billion users across their feeds. Ads from discovery campaigns can be seen on YouTube, Gmail, and of course, Google Discover. Then there are shopping campaigns. These have been fantastic for my e-commerce clients. If you're a retailer, I would strongly recommend that you get on Google Ads and set up a shopping campaign. These are the ads at the top of Google's search results page when you're searching for products. You'll recognize them from having the images and a price in the ad. And finally, there is the option for video campaigns. These are the ads you see before, during, and after YouTube videos. Generally, they can be a very cheap way of expanding your audience, and you only pay when someone either interacts with your ad, watches it in full, or for at least 30 seconds. For this tutorial, we're going to select the search campaign and click continue. Then we want to name our campaign. I like to name my campaign by the sort of keywords that it contains and the campaign type it is, like so. After that, we can choose from two additional networks. The first of those is the search network or Google search partners. 
This helps extend the reach of our search ads to hundreds of non-Google websites, such as the New York Times and Guardian newspapers, Ask.com, Lycos.com, search engines like that. From experience, Google search partners can be hit and miss for my clients, but the only way to tell is by running our ads on here. And I'm going to leave this box ticks as I have more positive than negative experiences from this. In fact, in several cases, Google search partners provided a lower CPA than Google search results themselves. And you'll only ever spend a small percentage of your budget here. The other network is display, and I always uncheck this box. That's because nothing good comes from showing our text ads where banner ads should be displayed. Then we're going to scroll down to location targeting. From here, we're going to select where we want ads to be displayed. Now, by default, the United Kingdom is selected for me, but I only want my ads to display in Bedfordshire, England. So I simply click on the enter another location button and search and select Bedfordshire like so. Similarly, you may only want to target users in a certain county, a number of counties, a single town, multiple cities, multiple countries maybe, and you can do all that here. After that, we're going to select which languages we want our ads to appear for. Now, as my ads are only going to be in English, I'm only going to target users searching in the English language. Now, you may want to target Spanish or German speaking people, and you can do that simply by searching in the box here and selecting those languages. Once we've selected our languages, we move on to the audience segments. This section allows us to narrow down our target audience by demographics or interests. Audiences are made up of groups of people with specific interests or intents based on what Google knows from their activity. For example, these segments can include people who shop for beauty products online, travel, maybe they're looking to purchase a new car, that kind of thing. And from here, we can even target people who have previously visited our websites. However, today I'm looking for people who are looking for marketing services so I can get my ad in front of them in hope they're looking for some Google ad support. So I can simply do a search for marketing in the search box here and then find an interest of advertising and marketing services. And then I can have a look down the other suggestions from Google and see if there's anything relevant there to me. Again, take your time going through this um, to make sure you choose the right um, interest for your businesses. Um, in this case, it is just going to be advertising marketing services for me. Uh, and now I can choose either to target just people who have shown an interest in marketing services or observation. Observation means your ad will still be shown to everyone, but you will have the option to increase the bids on your specific audiences and just see how they perform. And then perhaps in the future, you may want to target just those audiences. Then we scroll down to the budget. Now, as this is a brand new campaign, I'd recommend that we only spend a small percentage of our budget during the first week. That's so we can make a few tweaks just to make sure it is running optimally. Um, for example, there may be quite a few irrelevant searches that we've appeared for that we can add negative keywords to prevent our ads appearing for them in the future. Uh, we may want to make tweaks to the ads because the click-through rate was low, just that kind of thing. So for example, I have a thousand pound budget for the month, but I'm only putting 10 pound in here for the first seven days. And then once once I'm happy with the campaign, I can start increasing that to eventually get to the 33 pound daily budget that will get me to the thousand for the month. Then we need to choose our bid strategy. Now, Google hasn't even asked us for our domain name at this stage, so we can't even choose conversion as a goal. In fact, we only get a choice of maximize clicks or target impression share. Uh, for now, I'm gonna choose clicks, but once we've set up the campaign fully, I can switch that across to conversions if I wanted to. And after that, we just simply need to click save and continue. Our next task is to enter an ad group name. Similarly to how I name my campaigns, my ad groups are named after the keywords they contain, like so. This helps make it easier for me to manage the campaigns and for reporting purposes, but you can name your ad groups how you like. Our next task is to enter an ad group name. Similarly to how I name my campaigns, my ad groups are named after the keywords they contain, like so. This helps make it easier for me to manage the campaigns and for reporting purposes, but you can name your ad groups how you like. And finally, Google wants us to enter our domain name. Once we've entered our domain name, we can click on the Get Keyword Suggestions button. Now, as I know the keywords I want to appear for, I don't really need to do this. That's because I have access to Google's Keyword Planner tool. Unfortunately, you only get access to this tool once your campaign is set up. But by clicking on the Keyword Suggestions, Google will scrape our website for keywords that users search for and it thinks that we should be bidding on. Be sure to go through this list thoroughly to make sure there aren't any relevant keywords here. You don't want to be bidding on keywords that are going to waste your budget with no chance to turn into a sale or lead. In my instance, I'm a freelancer, so I don't want to be bidding on any of the agency or company terms that have appeared at the top of this list. 
Similarly, whilst my website does mention my Amazon PPC services, this campaign is specific for my Google ad support. So I'm going to remove that one too. And as I mentioned moments ago, I already know the keywords that I want to be bidding on. So where you see Google Ads Expert in front of you, this is what we call broad match type. This means that my ad could be appearing for searches broadly related to that keyword, such as Facebook Ads Expert or people even searching what is Google Ads. But if I put speech marks around my keyword like so, this turns my keyword into phrase match, meaning my ads only appear when a user's search contains that phrase. This eliminates a lot of irrelevant traffic, but I still need to be careful because my ad could still appear for searches such as Google Ads Expert Jobs, for example. That's what I meant by starting with a low budget. Just in case we appear for a lot of junk searches, we can eliminate these from future results by using negative keywords. The third and final match type is exact match. This is where we put square brackets either side of the search time like so. Now, exact isn't exact anymore. It's got a lot more broad over the years, but it does show your ads to much more relevant searches than the previous two match types. I'd actually recommend using exact match or both exact and phrase. Based on my expertise, I'm going to go with both exact and phrase match for this example. Then we can click on save and continue. After entering the keywords we want our ads to appear for, now it's time to create those ads. Firstly, we need to enter the final URL. This is the landing page that users will be sent to when they click on our ad. Now, my homepage is well optimized for the keywords I am bidding on, and it's essential you get this right. The difference between a well optimized page and a generic landing page could easily be the difference on whether your campaign is a success or not, whether Google Ads is profitable to your business or not, or whether you're getting as high ROI from your ads or not. Now, I do have a landing page optimization section in my advanced Google Ads course over at my website. Then we come onto the display path. These are the words that are going to appear after your domain in the ad. And it doesn't have to be a real page. As my ad is targeting users looking for a Google Ads expert, I'm simply going to enter these keywords into the domain path. And you'll see them appear in the preview on the right hand side. After that, we want to start creating headlines for our ads. The headlines are the big blue text in the ads that stand out more than anything else. What you enter here could be the difference between a potential customer choosing between you and a competitor, so be sure to take your time over these. I recommend that you include your keywords in some of the headlines as this is what the user is searching for. Also include as many relevant USPs in your ads and finish with a call to action. Now for time's sake, I've already entered a number of headlines as you can see. Headlines consist of up to 30 characters and you can have up to 15 headlines per ad. Now, only three of these will be shown at any one time as per the preview on the right hand side and some browsers and mobile devices only show two. Google's AI actually decides which two or three headlines are displayed. This is dependent on the query among other factors. Once we're happy with our headlines, we can scroll down and enter our descriptions. Again, I've already entered my descriptions for time's sake in this tutorial. Descriptions consist of up to 90 characters and are the small text beneath the headline as you can see in the preview on the right hand side. I'd recommend including your search keyword and a call to action in at least one of your descriptions just like you can see I've done. These site links appear on occasion beneath the top ad in the results and greatly increase the space the ad takes up, helping to increase the click through rate. As a result, I would certainly recommend that you add site links where possible. To use them, we'll need to enter at least two, and they cannot be the same URL that we've used for our main ads, so we may need to be creative here. Up to four site links will appear at any one time. For me, I may want to include links to my Google Ads case studies and my Google Ads advance course. And whilst I don't want to add site links for the sake of adding site links, such as adding links to my Facebook ads or my LinkedIn ad services, I do want to make sure I have four. In this instance, as I have the time and creativity, I can consider creating unique contacts or about me pages highlighting my Google Ads expertise with the intention of trying to get the user to make an inquiry. This is just me being clever and trying to take advantage of the site link space. This isn't essential. There are also more asset types, including promotions, prices, calls and call outs. I'll go into more details on this on my advanced Google Ads course. For now though, I'm just going to leave this blank and click continue this takes us on to the final step of our campaign, which is the billing information. Once you've entered your billing information and verified it, your campaign will be set up and ready to run. For obvious reasons, I'm going to stop recording here, fill out my details, verify, click submit, and resume the recording afterwards. And once you've entered your billing information, you will see your Google Ads dashboard for the first time. This means our campaign is now set up and ready to run. 
There's one final thing I want to show you though. So if you click on tools and settings in the top menu there and then negative keyword lists on the left hand side. So if we click on the plus sign in the blue circle here, we can now create our negative keyword list. Now mine's going to be called account because I know these keywords are going to be account wide. And from my experience, I know the kind of keywords that people are going to be searching for. Uh, so I'm just going to enter them here and then click save on that list. And we're now going to apply that negative keyword list to our one and only campaign. And then if we head back to our Google Ads dashboard, I just want to show you where you'll find uh, your potential negative keywords. So if you click on keywords on the left hand side and then search terms, uh, after your ads have been running for a few hours or a day or a few days, you'll start to see lists of actual keywords that people have searched for that your ads have appeared for. Now they might not necessarily have clicked on them, but even still, if your ads are appearing for irrelevant traffic, such as what is Google Ads or how to set up Google Ads, uh, you'll want to start adding these as negative keywords. So you will actually click on, there'll be a box here where you'll click on the keyword um, to add it, and then there'll be an option to add negative keyword. Um, if it's something such as, in my example, what is, then I want to add that as a phrase match because that's two words. If it's Amazon, Facebook, New York, that kind of thing, then I will probably want to add it as broad match because I don't want, I don't ever want to be appearing for this keyword. And that's a wrap. Thank you for watching my step-by-step -step Google Ads tutorial. I hope the campaign you've set up today will be successful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below or feel free to email me. I'd also be grateful if you could like, subscribe and or share my video. And again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.